Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. Today we'll be taking a look at the latest release of Peppermint OS, specifically version 11. Now for the uninitiated, Peppermint OS is another lightweight Linux distribution that aims to achieve low system resource usage while maintaining user friendliness. However, unlike some other lightweight Linux distributions, Peppermint takes a slightly different approach. Whereas many other distros will provide lightweight applications in place of more complex ones in order to reduce system resources, Peppermint takes a different sort of two-pronged approach. The first point is that they only ship core applications out of the box, but make it simple for you to install specifically the applications that you need. So the system doesn't have any additional overhead or applications that you're never going to use. The second part of Peppermint's approach is embracing online or cloud-based applications whenever it's practical to do so. And we'll take a look at both of these philosophies in action here in a couple moments. But first, I want to point out a couple things specific to Peppermint 11's release. In the past, Peppermint has been based on Ubuntu LTS, and it's served it fairly well over the years. However, they've decided that now it's time to shift to a different base, and Peppermint 11 is now based on Debian. While I don't know their exact reasoning for this, it's possible that it could have to do with Canonical's push for snap packages, or perhaps just heavier resource usage on Ubuntu, while Debian might be providing a more flexible or lightweight base that they can really expand on top of. We'll take a look at the few of the peculiarities that set Peppermint apart from other lighter weight Linux distributions, and a lot of that is found right here on the Peppermint welcome screen. As I mentioned before, one of the goals of Peppermint is to give you only the software that you need to use. And you can see that right here in their slogan, is that we hope you enjoy everything you need and nothing you don't. And you really see this philosophy right away here on the welcome screen, as Peppermint OS doesn't ship with a web browser. If you go through the menu here, there just isn't a web browser. We'll take a look at ICE here in a moment. Yet they've kept this user-friendly. Right here on the welcome screen that comes up the first time you run this, you have an option here to install your web browser of choice. So if a web browser is something that you need, which plenty of users will, it's really easy to choose which one you want right here. This eliminates having a bulky web browser installed by default that some users may not use and other users may choose to replace with something else, but end up leaving multiple browsers installed on their system unnecessarily. This lets you pick exactly which one you'd like. For example, we'll choose Firefox here, and we'll choose to install it. Now we'll let that do its thing, and we'll, keep take, and we'll take a look at other parts of the screen here. We also have Peppermint Extras, which... We also have Peppermint Extras, which includes some additional niceties that you may like. For example, we have additional themes here, as well as icons and some extra wallpapers. Uh, and this is really just to reduce the overall footprint out of the box. By default, they figured the few wallpapers they have here will suffice for most users, and the default themes will probably be okay, but if you're someone that wants those extras, then it's really easy to get them here. For example, we'll install these wallpapers. As it indicates, this installs 47 additional wallpapers here. And this just runs a nice little script to pull these in from the server. Alright, so that actually took a few moments. The connection to the server seemed a little slow there. But, as we take a look, we have lots of nice wallpapers here now. I think some of these may be from past versions of Peppermint. Uh, some of them look new. So regarding applications, we'll take a real quick departure from the welcome screen for a moment to look at what does come included here. For accessories, we do still have a lot of our basics that you'd come to expect, such as our archive manager for unzipping files, a clipboard manager, disks utility for managing partitions, of course our file manager, which does use Nemo, which I think is a nice inclusion. Uh, it strikes a very good balance of features and being fairly light on resources. We have the menu editor here to, well, edit this menu. A screenshot utility, our task manager, and a text editor. 
This is using Mousepad, which is another nice, lightweight, simple text editor. For internet, again, we just have ICE here, which I will talk about more in a minute, I promise. That's the second time I've said it now. Of course, we just installed Firefox. There's no media player installed here by default, but again, we'll talk about that in a moment. Got a volume control utility here for Paul's audio. We have a list of all of our system settings here, which we'll also get to in more detail. And a few system utilities, such as the package manager, which uses Synaptic. We have the GW package installer for installing dev files, Gparted for advanced disk partitioning, and our terminal. So back here on the Peppermint welcome screen, I do want to talk about installing some additional software as there clearly were some omissions there in the default applications. And back in this web browser selector, here on the left, we have a list of some other common software that you may wish to download. For example, we can download a Trill, which is a very nice documented PDF viewer. Uh, we have a BitTorrent client here, Transmission. We have an image viewer being GPIC View. They recommend Parole as the default media player for XFCE. And we have the Monte Calculator if you're looking for a calculator on your system. Also in here, while not installed by default out of the box, you can easily click to install Snap or Flatpak support in Peppermint OS. And to download those or any of your software in a nicer, more user-friendly environment than Synaptic, you can also download the GNOME software store. And they also happen to have a nice little YouTube downloader utility here. Now, as I mentioned near the top of this video, the other way that Peppermint is kept lightweight is through the use of online or cloud-based applications. And while these certainly aren't things that you need to use, many of us ultimately end up using services like Google Drive, Dropbox, or Nextcloud, applications that often run in a web browser. And in some cases, it might be nice to bring these over to the system. Yes, thank you, GNOME software. In some cases, it might be nice to bring these web applications over to the system and run them essentially as native applications. And that's what ICE is for. Uh, we saw it in the menu earlier under Internet. And they've also got a nice little button here for it on the welcome screen to explain how it works. And this allows you to create an independent web wrapper for a specific website. And this actually brought up documentation for it here, talking about exactly what it is. It creates a site-specific browser, and this explains a lot of information about it and how to set up an application, but we'll just dive right on into it right now, as it is fairly straightforward. So here in the ICE application, we can name an application whatever we want. So for example, we'll do Google Drive, then we'll enter the web address for it which is drive.google.com. Of course, you could go to the website, go to whatever page you want to go to, copy and paste the URL in here. Then you can pick which menu you want this application to show up under. You could put it under Internet, but Google Drive is often used as a replacement for an Office suite, so we'll put it under Office. And you can either select your own icon from any image you have, or use the website's default. If I click that, it will pull in the Google logo from the website, though you may wish to upload the Google Drive logo or something yourself. And then down here, we can pick which browser that we wish to use this wrapper in. As Firefox is the only one installed, it's the one we'll have to pick here. But if you have any of these other browsers installed, then you could choose to use them instead. This essentially determines which browser is being used as the back end to actually load the website. Now that we've created this, we will click Apply. And now, if we go into our menu, under Office, we have Google Drive. So we can click this, and it opens up in its own window here, and should load the Google Drive website. Here we go. And you could sign in. And once you're signed in, you're greeted here with your Google Drive, just as you'd expect. But it's the fact that this has created a nice, independent, isolated application here that you can load on your system to do whatever you want without being bogged down by all the other interfaces and toolbars of your web browser, and it's handled like an independent application in your menu. So you can create this for essentially any website. You could use it for other 
drive providers or online messaging services like Signal or Facebook Messenger, uh, anything that there isn't a native app for on Linux, but there's a website for, you can pretty much do it here. And these tend to be more lightweight than just chalking your system full of heavier installed applications. So ICE is really a nice utility here that, of course, you can also go into remove and remove any that you've already created. I really don't use Google Drive, so get out of here. The next really nice feature with Peppermint OS is the Peppermint Hub. And this is a one-stop control center for everything on your system. This combines all of the default desktop environment settings, along with some additional Peppermint utilities that make configuring any aspect of your system really easy. For example, they give us some commonly used settings here, such as your display settings, accessibility, adjusting panel settings, as well as other appearance and theme settings, uh, power management, notifications, uh, your mouse and touchpad, keyboard, and the default system applications. Of course, for any additional settings here, you can also open up the XFCE settings manager, which includes all your other settings here. Then we also have this hardware and software tab here, which includes a lot of settings related to, well, your, your hardware and software. You can manage your network connections and printers, get access to your disk utilities, manage user accounts, you also get some system information, see a list of some recommended packages, manage updates. You've got links here to go to FlatHub to install flat packs or App Image Hub to install app images, as well as open the Synaptic Package Manager. Yeah, we've also got the Snap Store here. Don't want to forget about Snaps. <laughs> so this is a really nice uh, hub <laughs> for all of your system settings. Um, and it combines them all in a really nice interface here that's simple to navigate and it really helps to clean up a lot of things that aren't the easiest to find here in the default settings, and also combines a lot of other nice utilities, such as installing packages from various different sources. I will say there is this strange omission that tends to happen in XFCE, where there aren't any sound settings here in the settings page. Uh, this is something that Linux Lite worked around by including their own utility in here to manage volume control and system sounds. And XFCE does have a volume control utility here under multimedia that lets you manage all of that stuff. But for whatever reason, this isn't included in the desktop's system settings. It's kind of a weird quirk of XFCE that I've never liked. I would have personally liked to see that included either in here in the control center settings or somewhere within the peppermint hub is it's kind of a weird omission and uh on the topic of quirks real quick just little things that i think maybe should be improved upon i'm not a huge fan of some of the font colors here uh, i understand the color scheme they're going for but some of this red on dark gray isn't the easiest to read um you know Plenty of people won't have any problems with it, but if your eyesight's not the greatest, this isn't very good contrast here. Uh, and this extends to... Ah, there we go. Yeah, the welcome screen doesn't like doing two things at once. Also in our software selection here, this brown text to indicate that an application's already installed isn't the greatest contrast on the dark gray background. If you're using a lighter theme, I suspect this wouldn't be much of an issue, but on a darker background like this, some of the font color choices don't seem the best. Now there's also just a few theming inconsistencies here. For example, you'll notice a lot of these dialogues have these nice translucent title bars here. There you can kind of see whatever's behind it. And I think this looks really nice. But then you notice some of these other windows here. Uh, I suspect they're using like GTK3 or something, something different, some sort of different framework. Uh, they don't have the same translucency and it's not a huge deal. It's just that, you know, it's a slight inconsistency that you do notice. Also, the Peppermint Hub here, uh, while it does have the nice translucent title bar, for whatever reason, the tab list here at the top is bright white and not matching the rest of the dark theme. So, it's a little strange. There's just a few theming inconsistencies that I would love to see improved. I do recognize that, you know, managing all of this theming and all these frameworks is really complex. So there may be a very good reason that they can't do that, but it is a slight inconsistency nonetheless. That said, 
Overall, I do highly recommend Peppermint OS, and if you're in the market for a lightweight Linux distribution, I do highly recommend giving this a try. I know I say that for a lot of these, and it seems like there are a million lightweight distributions out there these days, so I can't say whether you'd prefer this over any of the others, but I will say it's definitely worth trying, as it has a very unique approach to how it handles applications between really giving you a simple install where you can add just the apps that you want to use, and of course prioritizing those web wrappers and single site applications, it could really be a nice user experience for a lot of people. So I do highly recommend at least trying out Peppermint OS and seeing if you like those features and the way that they've implemented them. That said, I also hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then a like is greatly appreciated. If there's any feedback that you'd like to give, feel free to post in the comments. I do my best to reply to all of them. And to stay up to date with the latest content, I recommend subscribing to the channel and marking that notification bell. I also post on Twitter, at PlanetLinux98, with the latest news and updates for the channel. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on Planet Linux.